Good day. We now we are going to discuss the fundamentals of outsourcing module one. So for the course overview, this course will introduce the basics of the of the business process outsourcing industry and how it contributes to the growth of the economy of the Philippines. So class session will be done through um, for this new normal, I'm going to make a pre-made video and then I'm posting it on social media and YouTube. And then of course, class participation, group discussion. Guys, even if this is an online class and a synchronous online class, you still have group discussions and group work. So don't be worried about that. And you have also individual tasks like assignments and the likes. If we have ample of time, we can have article reviews and video presentation. Ah, don't worry, video presentation will really, really be present. So for the course policy, you have to come on time. But this does not, this does not mean that you really have to log in on time. But when I ask you to view the videos that I am posting or the assignments I am assigning you, please do it. Be supportive with your with your group mates and be willing to help do your assigned tasks and be enthusiastic be having a positive mind and perception and outlook can help you actually in achieving your goals of course if you're doing something refrain from doing social media if it will the old old normal you're not supposed to use your gadgets inside the classroom but well we are in the new normal so here goes nothing. For the grading system, attendance, this attendance may not be the attendance that I'm going to have, but it is more on timeliness. Timeliness in terms of the submission of your, of your assignments, of your presentation maybe. And then that's 25%. Assignment and group presentation, the content of your presentation is also 25%. Quizzes is 25%. Midterm and final exam is also 25%, a total of 100%. And of course, 50% of the midterm and 50% of the final will be your final grade. So, before we're going to start, this is maybe awkward for you, but even if you are uh, lounging in your couch or somewhere else where signal is good, just interact with this video. So you have to say some your first name, one word that best describe you, and of course your idea about this course. So I'm going to go first. My name is Lovely. I'm going to be your instructor for this course. And then one word that best describe me as of the moment is that I'm ecstatic, actually. An idea about this course, this is something that you will learn a lot and understand why various companies and various businesses are doing outsourcing and why is it the trend now so to begin the overview of the bpo industry actually the bpo industry has been in the philippines for qu quite some time already during the time of of our president ramos however it has been developed and then it was formally organized and it, it, it actually is booming until now and it has contributed to a lot of number of jobs in the Philippines. So just read through it. And then um, the current mix is 70% of BPO firms are based in Metro Manila and 30% in the province. However, they have a goal that it's not only congested in the metro, like Metro Cebu, Bacolod, or in NCR, they want to expand the BPO industries in, in provinces where, where the necessary equipment and technology are also there. That's why we can experience um, various BPO industries already providing jobs in our locality, right? Some part of the province like Tanhai, Mabinay, and 
there if there is a good internet connection, home based individual are actually doing business process outsourcing within the comfort of their home, right? You have probably friends who are doing online jobs in the comfort of their houses. So that is still part of the BPO industry. So BPO industry has, it says that it can sustain in the business. It has contributed to a lot, lot of our tax. This is way back statistics in way back 2016. So don't worry, I'm going to give you an update of what is happening in the BPO industry. So this is the, the they want to have a roadmap wherein the BPO industry can really be um, something that help the economy of the Philippines. So aside from BPAP, there are a lot of members of the B BPO industries in the Philippines. The Game Developers Association of the Philippines, Global In-House Center Council, the Health Information Management. And when guys, please remember that when we are talking about BPO industry, it does not limit to call centers. The, the usual thing that we that we that we connote BPO, okay? So BPO is, it includes services, health services, accounting services, among other software, game developing, and even um, loans and finances and the likes. So this is some of the BPO industry in the Philippines, animation games, software development, engineering and designs and the likes. And then the growth of the IT BPM, their goal is actually to, to distribute the BPO industries within the country. Just I said a while ago, they don't want to congest the metro area, but they also want to put sites in provinces where graduates are abundant. At the same time, technology is also present. So... Here is an update of the BPO industry before pandemic came. So let's go way back 2019. 2020 actually is a unique and challenging year for the Philippine BPO market. The ongoing global health crisis does not only test the resiliency of the Philippine outsourcing companies, but also altered the plans and projection set to strengthen the presence of the BPO industry in the country. Despite the challenges brought by this pandemic, the business process management industry remains a pillar of the Philippine economy. So this was actually an article taken online. So, <clears throat> these are the key points and on what happened in 2019 before I'm going to discuss 2020. BPO industry in the Philippine statistics, so the key points are the IT BPM industry continues to be a leading contributor to the Philippines economy providing thousands of jobs to Filipinos and contributing billions to countries' gross domestic product. So go back to your economics, gross domestic product. The shift from low-level skill tasks into mid- and high-level skills continues, continues because of the changing demand of the global IT BPM industry. So technically, our country has adapted to the global, to the changing industry. Along with the projected, projected increase in the mid- and high-level skills, the healthcare sector and the animation and game development industry are also expected to grow at a faster rate. Remember, guys, this was 2019. Key industry players will continue to move to high-value complex and digital services. The contact center industry will still remain constant, headcount, and revenue growth amidst the threat of automation. So contact center, this is now the call center. So to continue... The BPO industry is still largest employer in the Philippines. The IT business process management or the IT BPM industry created 71,000 new full-time jobs for Filipino in 2019. From 1.23 million jobs, the total industry headcount grew to 1.3 million or 5.8% higher compared to 2018. 29% of the low-skilled jobs are predicted, predicted to decline by 2022, according to the research and consulting firm Frost and Sullivan. That's why also you have to continually improve your skills and, as an individual if you want to work in the BPO industry or any job for that matter. You, you, one should really continually improve 
their skills and knowledge, of course. Meanwhile, mid-skilled jobs are projected to increase by 12%. High-level jobs are seen to rise by 19%. And of course, as the, uh, they pro projected that by 2022, 73% of the job in the global ITBPM industry will require mid and high level skilled job. The IT and Business Process Association of the Philippines, or IBPAP, the enabling association for the country's ITBPM sector, collaborates with var various government and private organizations to facilitate upskill programs that would keep Filipino workers relevant and thriving to the global market. Actually, guys, this BPO subject that you have was incorporated way back 2013 in the curriculum, not because um, the colleges want, wanted it or the BSBA wanted it, but because uh, the industry or the ITBPM industry wanted to, or they see, they want their workers to be already equipped on what is the nature on what is happening in the BPO industry. That's why they, they choose 70, 17 state colleges to be granted with trainings and seminars and updates on what is happening in the BPO industry. So faculties um, and instructors are trained to give you knowledge on the whereabouts of the BPO industry. Some of you or some of you may have already tried working in the BPO industry, so you have ideas on what is happening in the BPO industry and also the challenges. So now we go to uh, 2020 on what happened in 2020. So here it goes. So this is what the statistics goes in 2020 and with the effect of the pandemic. BPO Philippine Statistics 2020 and the effect of the pandemic to the outsourcing industry. So the ill effect of COVID-19 have left most SMEs cash strapped. Some struggled to survive while some have taken the challenge to ride the tide of change brought by the pandemic. Larger businesses with bigger cash buffers, on the other hand, also experienced a sharp drop in revenues. This is especially true for businesses under the travel, hospitality, and tourism industry. Yes, our country, this sector, even in the BPO industry, like the airline companies, or the tourism industries that books the flights and the likes or books the hotel are actually affected by this. The decline in demand directly affects the BPO industry in the Philippines. Some clients pulled out their accounts, leaving employees on floating status. So while these challenges delay the growth of the outsourcing market, many BPO in the Philippines still stand strong. Then check out the industry in the Philippines statistics for 2020. You can check that out online. So to continue, even despite the challenges, they still do this actually. Investment pledges for January to July 2020 are 37% higher compared to the same period in 2019. Maybe, they could, maybe this is because of the pan pandemic. IBPOP CEO, CEO Ray Untal said the pandemic will significantly affect the 2020 headcount and revenue projection. We are not the only BPO industry in the country that is being affected. Actually, it's all over the world. He added that it will also cause changes in the existing work and ser service model within the industry. So this is where um, Workers in the BPO industry only work for two or three times a week and their salaries are cut off because of the pandemic and the ECQ and GCQ that has happened in our country. The ITBPM industry continued its business operation and increased its capacity amidst the community quarantine with the support of different government agencies. Good thing we have different um, government agencies that actually <clears throat> help in keeping the economy of our country at bay or somehow not that bad. Department of Trade and Industry, the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, and the Interagency Task Force on the Emerging Infectious Disease. So these are the government agencies that has helped not only the BPO industry, but our country. <clears throat> Excuse. 
According to UNESCO, the Philippines has an average of 98 to 98.2% literacy rate. Whew, 98. Before we have 95, 95 or 100%. 98.2 for females and 98.1 for males. Well, go, go girl power. There are 788 BPO companies composed of large and SMEs according to PESA. So this is what is being registered. There are individuals who are actually doing jobs in, in BPO, but they are just in the comfort of their homes. So to add, Philippine business, this is still in, in 2020. Philippine businesses first felt the impact of the pandemic on the second week of March. So we're almost April. So they have they have already really feel the pandemic on the um on the end week of March. Even so, PESA or the Philippine Economic Zone Authority still reported a 37% increase in ITBPO investment pledges, as, as I mentioned a while ago, from January to July. And then, as the focus on mid and high value skills intensifies, 65% of BPO employees can deliver more complex and varied services for the international and local clients. According to experts, the Philippine outsourcing services will cover 15% of the total global outsourcing market by 2022. Moreover, so this is actually promising for the Philippine BPO company. Moreover, the industry is also projected to grow 9% every year for the next five years. When this pandemic ends, maybe the 9% increase will still increase, will be probably 10 or 11% if all goes well. So now let's discuss. These are the updates and the overview of the BPO industry. Now we are going to, of course, um, discuss now properly the BPO industry. So for the now we're, the topical overview, definition of outsourcing, the rationale of outsourcing, functions or services being outsourced, advantages and disadvantages of outsourcing. So the, for the learning objective, you will be able, able to define and explain outsourcing. I identify the reasons why company outsource, to identify the functions and services that are being outsourced, and of course, to know the advantages and dis disadvantages of outsourcing. First, we define outsourcing. Outsourcing is an arrangement in which one company provides services that could also be provided in-house by the client company. It is a trend that is becoming more common among local and global industry of today. So there are other definitions of outsourcing actually in the internet. It, one way or another, it's just the same. So don't worry about that. So these are the reasons why company outsource. Capacity management, lower cost, better performance, swiftness and expertise, risk sharing, reduce operational and recruitment costs. So capacity management. Management of the organization's capacity limit, whereby resources are increased or decreased instead in step with rising or falling demand. Example is demand chasing. So what is capacity management? To give you an idea of, of what is capacity management as one of the reasons why company outsource is like this. If we are going just to use an, if you have a business and your business is really good in baking pastries, you focus on bake, baking pastries. Your capacity management is only encompasses baking pastries. If you hire security guard as part of that business, then one way or another, you will have a hard time including that in your payroll and the likes. So you, hire, you outsource or you just hire someone or somebody else's to provide security guards for you. That's why most of businesses does not have their own security guard. Rather, they use agencies. They outsource. They use the agencies or the security agencies to provide the service for them. I hope that that, that uh, makes you understand better. Lower cost. 
the use of foreign companies with lower wages to produce resources. You might um, wonder why a lot of products are being already made in China. Like your some of your shoes, some of your sports apparel are already made in China, sometimes Thailand, sometimes Vietnam. Hope you can Google this up for for clarity also. This is because, or sometimes in the Philippines also, this is because they want to produce their goods, let's just say um, a US brand goods. They want to outsource the production of the goods because they can save. Let's just say an import, um, a sport shoes, a running shoes, if produced in in the US will cost, will probably cost 2,000 pesos. However, if that will be produced in the Philippines, for example, then it will only cost them 1,000 pesos. Then of course, if I am the business owner in the US, I will rather, I would rather outsource my production in the Philippines wherein I can save 1,000 pesos, that is already big for the company, right? So that's the second reason. Better performance because allows the firm to concentrate its resources in its core competencies. I'll go back to the example I gave in the first in capacity management. You are a company that is good in making pastries and the likes. You are an expert of it. You perform about good or the best in that area baking of pastries if you outsource if you let's just say when you bake pastries you're going to need the ingredients right however you don't plant the ingredients you don't plant the flour the wheat the the sugar cane you don't plant them you just buy them actually that's sim that's the simplest um, example of outsourcing you can bake but you don't need to plant all the ingredients from the sugar, from the flour, with, where it came from, from among other confectionaries you use in baking, right? Because that is not your expertise. That's why, that's why company outsource because they want to focus on what they do best, their core competencies. Okay? I hope you get that. Next is swiftness and expertise. Once you outsource your... Once you outsource part of your functions, then one way or the other, the person where you outsource this, for instance, the, the, for the same example, the security agency, your, your expertise is baking pastries. When you outsource secure security, you outsource this, this to someone or to a business where they are also the best in it. So, Tasks are outsourced to vendors what specialize in their field. So you, you outsource, you don't outsource your security security to a to a to a laundry service, right? Because they are not expert in that. They they're expert in laundry. That's why you outsource it in the security. Risk sharing. Since the outsource vendor is a specialist, they plan your risk mitigating factor better. Why? It is best to outsource why you can share risk. If let's just say if you hire your own security in you are a pastry industry and very good at it, you are actually taking the risk of your security, like not only the risk and the cost, it but also the risk on how to train them, if they're going to do well and the likes. That's why, of course, they they the share is the risk is being shared rather. Reduce operational and recruitment costs. It is because you are not the one hiring the, the, the individual already, like there is security or the one planting your flour for your pastries or planting your sugar cane for your, the confectionaries and the sugar and the icing for your pastries, right? So someone is doing it for you. So you don't, that reduces your operational costs. And recruitment costs as well because rec recruitment is also expensive. So these are some of the reasons why company outsource. So and of course, 
you might wonder what are the commonly outsourced activities. IT outsourcing, content development, recruitment, there are already agencies doing that, manufacturing, legal services, web design and maintenance, logistics. Of course, if you want to send something to someone, you're not going to send it yourself, right? You're using LBC for our local or JRS. I hope I'm not going to be sued by this company, but actually we are using that. Or among other, Ninja Van and the likes. And of course, technical and customer support. You have friends probably in the, in the BPO industry who are doing technical and customer support wherein customer asked, why is my phone not Charging, why is my phone not doing this and that? So that's part of technical support. Or why is my computer not on? So that's the that's part of technical support where contact centers are, are actually servicing. So what are the functions in the industry that you are outsourcing? Of course, you, are, you can only outsource non-core functions or activities. These are service at aspects that are not necessarily required by a firm in fulfilling its value proposition to its customer. So let's just say you outsource, let's go back to your page three industry. Let's just say you outsource your flour, right? Your flour, your baking ingredients. If you outsource this, does it, Is it really, um, does it disturbs your value proposition to, you, to your customer? Think about it. It does not, right? Because, because these are just the ingredients. What you do best is making them into an output. But if you outsource baking and that is your core activities, then one way or another, you are now already undervaluing your proposition to your customer. Because that is what you do best. You're not supposed to outsource what you do best. If you're a lawyer, are you going to outsource legal service when you are already the one doing the legal service? Of course not, right? So you can only outsource something that does not or is not required by the firm in fulfilling your value proposition, like security guard. The security guard does not add value to you how, how tasteful and delightful your pastry is, right? But it can increase the security of your business, but does not necessarily the value proposition to your customer by providing them delicious products or good quality products. I hope you get it. I just hope you get it. You can ask questions actually in the comments below if you don't get it. So advantages of outsourcing to the employer. To the employer. So the employer is the owner of the business. Freeing up management from dealing with myriad and complex employment issues. If there are issues, if you outsource this, it will be already the, the agencies that where you outsource is going to deal with the issues. Leaving management more time to concentrate in what they do best. So this is, I had, it has been discussed that this is the reason why company outsource, right? Provide management with an integrated and cost-effective approach to human resource management and administration because you don't have a lot of headache in recruitment and dealing with um, dysfunctional, dysfunctional and dysfunction on some employees it is already the agencies enables management to give big business benefits to employees due to enough economies of scale so advantage of outsourcing to employees so those who are working in the bpo industries first is working abroad living here this is actually the concept that they have been that they have coined because you're actually dealing with dealing with foreign companies but you're still in the either in the comfort of your home or still in the philippines 
higher pay and no discrimination. This is actually true because they don't care if you are high school or senior high graduate. As long as you can deliver, then you're good to go. And of course, full insurance coverage include dental and health benefits, high overtime pay, generally no dress code. And of course, a prestige. Why a prestige? Having a job is actually a prestige, especially in the time of the pandemic. If you still have your job, your parents have still the job, then that's good. And of course, there is also a disadvantage. Shifting schedule and the graveyard shift because this actually changes our biological clock because the time here is not the same with the time of that companies you are working. So it is night in our country, but still morning in their country. So you have to work at night to, to be equal to their morning. And of course, dealing with irate customers, that really sometimes takes its toll on you. But you have to be patient enough in order to solve their issues. Oh, that is all for, for module one. There, these are the references that I use in outsourcing. <laughs>